أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولو ترى إذ المجرمون ناكسوا رؤوسهم عند ربهم ربنا أبصرنا وسمعنا فرجعنا نعمل صالحا إنا موقنون صدق الله العظيم فقال النبي الكريم صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم أحب الناس إلى الله أنفعهم للناس أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام أما بعد I'll praise you due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gathering us here today and granting us this opportunity to fulfill the rights that are due unto him and all praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us to this path, this path of salvation, this path of Islam, through which one day, bidhnillahi ta'ala, we will gather together in his paradise, gazing at his face, azza wa jal. And all praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sending us his last and final beloved messenger, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it manifests itself in a variety of different ways in our lives. And there are different things and different lessons that we must take from his life, from his narrations, from the way he was with his companions. In the time that we live in, the question that haunts so many across the world, whether unfortunately they are believers or not, relates to purpose. To purpose. And the question of, what is my purpose on this earth? And the simple answer can be, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I did not create men and jinn except to worship me. So there you go, there's your answer. And this is true. Sadaq, you've spoken the truth if you said this. But what we don't always recognize is that ibadah, that worship, manifests itself in so many different ways. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was constantly in a form of ibadah. Because every action that he did, every action that he committed was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so whether he was praying salah, whether he was helping someone in need, 
whether he was sitting with his companions. All the things that he did were in some way, shape, or form ibadah. To reach that level is something that is extraordinarily difficult. You're talking about a mountain that few, if any, will ever climb. Because the Prophet ﷺ was the peak. He was the greatest of humanity. ﷺ. But at the same time, we have to not only look at our own lives today and his life, but we have to really start to extrapolate what it is that we can do to live a life of purpose. Because anybody sitting here who thinks that going to work from 9 to 5, coming home, eating dinner, binging Netflix, and then doing whatever else for the rest of your time is a purposeful life, they're fooling themselves. That's not a purposeful life. Going to work, coming home, paying the bills, rinse, repeat. Where's the purpose? Is your function to be an ATM? Man or woman, it doesn't matter. Is your function in this earth to be an ATM? The reality is that every single individual's purpose will be different. My purpose will not be the same as a different individual's purpose. But at its core, what matters is not the action, but rather the principles behind them, the thought process behind them. The Prophet ﷺ narrated to us a story of individuals from Banu Israel that truly highlights, at least for the sake of this khutbah, it highlights what it is that the objective of our life is. The Prophet ﷺ begins by telling us, Inna thalathatan fi Bani Israel abrasa wa akra wa a'ma. There was three individuals in the time of Banu Israel. There was a man who was a leper, a man who was bald and a blind man. Three individuals. And so the Prophet ﷺ tells us, Allah decided to test these individuals. He sent an angel to them. And this angel, of course, came in the form of an individual. He came to the leper. He asks him a question. He says, what is the thing in this earth? What do you want more than anything else in this world? Now, you can think for a moment to yourself that, well, this person should say Allah's acceptance, that's the right answer. And again, Sadaq, you would be right. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not deny that we are human beings with desires and wants of this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not ask us to give up everything of this life. Asceticism in this dunya, the idea of being a hermit, it doesn't exist in that way. Asceticism is not having connection. But to have things is fine. For our hearts to be connected to them, that's the problem. And you see this individual, he responds and he says, قَالَ لَوْنٌ حَسَنًا وَجِلْدٌ حَسَنًا I just want beautiful skin and I want a good complexion. complexion because a leper, somebody who suffers from leprosy has boils and they have skin that people are very afraid of and bothered by. The people, they just reject me. They push me away because of my affliction. The Prophet said, so this angel touches this man. And what happens with this leprosy is taken away. He's given a good complexion. He's given beautiful skin. He asks him a question. He says, what wealth do you prefer? What is your preference in wealth? And the man responds, he says, he says, it's, it's a type of wealth, a camel, a type of wealth in this time. This individual then, he continues on, that, قَالَ أَحَدُمَا الْإِبْلِ Excuse me, قَالَ الْآخِرُ الْبَقَرِ فُعْطِيَ نَاقَةً عُشَرَى This man is given this camel that is pregnant. And the angel finally says, قَالَ يُبَارِكُ لَكَ فِيهَا May Allah give you barakah. And he leaves. Then he goes to the bald man. He asks him the same thing. What's the most beloved thing? What do you want most in this world? And the man says that I'd like to be free of this. قَالَ شَعْرٌ حَسَنٌ I want beautiful hair. وَيَذْهَبُ عَنِّي هَذَا And take this affliction away from me that I have these spots and other things. I want people to realize that I'm, I'm worthy of their time. I want to be around people. I don't want them to push me away. 
The Prophet says, so the angel touches him and again it goes away. Then the angel asks her, what kind of wealth do you like? This man responds, al baqar See here it says al baqar He says, cows, I prefer cattle. And so the angel, he gives him a pregnant cow. And again he says, yubariku laka fiha. May Allah put barakah. Finally he comes to a third man, this blind man. Now this man, he says, I wish that Allah gives me my sight back. Anybody who has ever suffered from any kind of affliction to their eyes, you know what this is like. Whether it's bad vision, whether you just grew up with an astigmatism, whatever it might be, anything that caused you to not be able to see properly. Those of our brothers and sisters with glasses can tell you it's not fun. You wake up in the morning, you can't see. You have to put on something else to be able to have this, to have vision. And this man is at the point where he's blind. Our brothers and sisters who suffer from such affliction can tell you the only thing they would wish for is just to be able to see again. And so this angel asks him and he says, I want Allah to, take, to give me my sight back. So that I can see the people. I can see the people. The angel touches him. And this man's sight returns once again. And he asks him, He says, sheep. And he gives him a pregnant camel. Excuse me, a pregnant sheep. And so finally, these three men have been given the thing that they desired the most. They've been given wealth. They've been given the opportunity to have wealth. And now they're left. After the angel says, may Allah bless you in it. Their wealth grows and multiplies. The Prophet ﷺ says, These individuals from just that one animal, they now have valleys of animals, of camels, of cows, of sheep. They're wealthy individuals now. Started from the bottom, now they're there. Right? And so now what happens? In this moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests them once again. They're given a test. They got the house, they got the cars, they got the wealth, they got everything that they could ask for from this dunya. They are the ATM. And this angel comes back to them. He comes back first to the leper. He comes back in the form of an individual who suffers from leprosy. Think about this first. He comes back as someone who is suffering from the very same disease this individual used to. If he remembered where he came from, he would look at this man and think to himself that, look, he's right where I was once. I was lowly. People looked down on me. Allah blessed me. I should help him. But subhanAllah, rather instead, this man, this angel comes and he comes in the form of a man who has leprosy. I've suffered some trials and tribulations in this journey of mine. I have no recourse except for Allah. And then you. I'm asking for your help. It's a long way of saying, I need your help. I'm just asking you, on behalf of the one who gave you all this wealth, who gave you everything that you have, I just would like one camel. Just one camel, so I can continue on my journey. I'll reach my destination. But subhanAllah, this man, who once had nothing, who once was rejected by people and looked down on, I have a lot of bills to pay, buddy. I got a lot of bills to pay. I have a lot of things that I have to take care of. Now, the angel, after hearing this, he responds, I think I know you. Aren't you that, that individual who was a leper? And people used to push you away, faqira, and you were poor. Allah, and Allah then gave you. The man says, 
Oh, no, you got it wrong. I inherited this money. Yeah, my father was wealthy and he was wealthy. He passed it down to me and that's where I got it. The angels just simply says, In kunta kathiban, Allahu ila makit. May Allah return you to what you were before if you're lying. And he is lying. Wa he comes to the man who was blah, who was bald headed. Once again, he says the same thing. He's as an individual suffering from the very same affliction that this man suffered from. This baldness, these spots. And he says the same thing. I'm on a journey. I've been having trouble. Please, will you just give me something? Something that I can continue on my way with that will allow me to, to, to fend for myself. And the man again says, In the I have a lot of bills to pay, buddy. Keep moving. And same thing. He asks him, aren't you that individual? He says, no, 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 no. I got this from so and so in this place and that place. And the angel says, well, okay, if you're lying, may Allah return you back. Finally, he comes to the blind man. He comes as a blind man. This angel comes to this former blind man as a blind man. He says, I'm a poor man. Rajulun miskeen. وَابْنُ سَبِيلِ And I'm a traveler. وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِيَ الْجِبَالِ فِي سَفَرِي And things have caused me to have issues on this trip. فَلَا بَلَاغَ الْيَوْمَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ بِكْ I have no way forward except through Allah and then you. Won't you help me? Will you give me something so that I can continue on my journey? فَقَالَ قَدْ كُنْتُ أَعْمَى He says, you know, I used to be blind just like you. I used to be blind. فَرَدَّ اللَّهُ بَصَرِي then Allah gave me my vision back. وَفَقِيرًا And I was poor. فَقَدْ أَغْنَانِي Then Allah gave me this wealth. فَخُذْ مَا شِئْتَ Take whatever you want. Take whatever you want. فَوَاللَّهِ لَا أَجْهَدُكَ الْيَوْمْ بِشَيْءٍ أَخَذْتَ لِلَّهِ أَخَذْتَهُ He says, I will not stop you from taking anything you want that you take for the sake of Allah. Take whatever. See, notice something here. This individual has wealth. He is not living as a hermit. He's not living away from society in a way that he never has to be bothered. He doesn't have a shell on his back. He's not somebody who just stays away from people. No, he's a rich man. He sees people all the time. But his heart is not connected to this wealth. And so when this man comes, he remembers where he was and he says, take what you want. Who cares? Allah gave it to me. Allah can take it. And subhanAllah, this angel responds to him. He says, I'm sick, man. No, no, keep your wealth. فَإِنَّ You've just been tested. فَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْكَ Allah is pleased with you. وَسَخِطَ عَلَى صَحِبِكَ And he is upset with your two friends. You see, we see an individual, in this case we see three individuals who struggled and suffered and fought. And things did not go their way. And then they got blessed with something that you could never count on. If you talk about the way that this world works, you can't simply sit around and say, an angel's going to come to me and give me everything. They got this opportunity. But what they did with it is where they differed. For an individual to be given so much and simply feel like my purpose is to continue to gather more, well, this is like the man that we'll read about in Surah Kahf today. The man of the two gardens who walked through his garden and said, I don't think the hour is coming. And even if it does, I'm going to get even better than this in Jannah. See, he focused on himself. And what was he left with was that when it was all taken away from him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives such a beautiful description. He says he's wringing his hands because he doesn't know what to do. And all he can say is, I wish I had never had partners with Allah. All he focused on in life was himself, how to gain more for himself, how to have more wealth for himself, bring more family for himself. And that's what his goal was. 
And these first two individuals, when they gained what they got, their focus was on how to better their own lives, how to make themselves better. While this blind man said, listen, I know where I came from. I was nothing and Allah gave me something. So take what you want. The question that we have to ask ourselves is that in the life that we live, are we individuals who are focused on enrichment for ourselves solely? Or are we individuals who are focused on enrichment for all those who we can help? The Prophet ﷺ told us, أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَنفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ The most beloved people to Allah are those who are most helpful to others. Take a moment and think about it for yourself. Have you had someone in your life who whenever you needed something, they were always there for you? They were just ready to serve, ready to help. Masajid live off of that. Individuals who give their lives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those people, while they may suffer, while they may have some difficulty, at the end of the day, they are in a position to be beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what better objective could we have than the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What greater thing could we possess than to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us? We won't get that answer in this life. But at the end of the day, what matters is our pursuit of how we go about it will differ. Everybody will be different. But the pursuit of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever way we can find it is truly the greatest purpose that any of us can find. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open all of our hearts to that purpose. Forgive us for our shortcomings and guide us to a better path. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ونعم محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد The alternative at the end for us brothers and sisters The alternative is for us to focus on helping ourselves to focus on making life better always trying to do more for ourselves. And the result of it is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. That there will come a time when you regret this. Hatta idha jaa'a ahaduhumul mawt qala rabbi rji'oon A time will come when death comes to this individual. And then when they are there, they have reached that point of no return. What will they say? قَالَ رَبِّ رَجِعُونَ Allah, return me, please. لَعَلِّ أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَقْتِ So I can just do a little more good. I know what you want now. I understand now. Please, just give me just a little bit more time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's response, كَلَّا No. You don't get more time. You had an opportunity and you squandered it. It's as if you had an exam with a timer in front of you. And you thought to yourself, you know what, I don't know how much time is on that clock, but let me just take a nap. I'll get up before it's due, and I'll finish it. Would anyone think that that's a logical thought process? Would anyone think that that makes sense? Would anyone advise their children to do so? Never. And yet, that's what these individuals are saying. In another verse, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الْمُجْرِمُونَ نَاكِسُوا رُؤُسِهِمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ Individuals will be standing in front of Allah with their heads bowed, knowing that they didn't do enough. رَبَّنَا أَبْصَرْنَا Oh Allah, we've seen now, we understand. وَسَمِعْنَا Please, فَرْجِعْنَا Just give us, just send us back. We've seen, we heard, we understand. نَعْمَلُوا صَالِحَ نَعْمَلْ صَالِحَ We'll do good. إِنَّا مُوْقِنُونَ We believe now. We're certain. We know what we're supposed to do. 
But it's the same answer. At the end of the day, brothers and sisters, the reminder that I give here today is for us to be able to detach ourselves from this love of dunya. I don't mean detach yourself from the world. I don't mean give up your job and just read Quran. <coughs> Rather, that we strive to help when people need it. That we strive to be individuals who are beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are helpful to people in any way, shape, or form that we can be. And I finish with the advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says, اغتنم خمسا قبل خمس Take advantage of five things before five things happen. شبابك قبل هرمك Your youth before your old age. وصحتك قبل سقمك Your good health before you get sick. وغناك قبل فقد Your wealth before you lose it. وفراغك قبل شغل Your time. Your free time before you get busy. And your life before your death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to take advantage of our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us where we fall short. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be of those who help those who are in need. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم عباد الله ان الله يأمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء ومن يبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله الذي يذكركم واشكروه يزدكم واستغفروا يغفر لكم وتقوه يجعل لكم من امركم مخرجا وقم الصلاه